Father God, we come before you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you convict us, you lead us, you guide us, you transform us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you were poured out on Pentecost Day. We thank you for born again people. You live inside of us. Holy Spirit, you're the one who shows us Jesus. You're the one who teaches us. You're the one who shows us the greatness of the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, we pray today. I confess I cannot give this message. I cannot. It's utterly impossible. I can say words, but it cannot be anointed unless you anoint it. I ask, Lord, you anoint me, anoint us, God, that you lay yourself upon us powerfully and you transform us today. That, God, the fire of your name be raised up in our hearts like never before. That we build at the fire in us. You build a fire in us to want you and you alone. So, Father God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We say together, I'm radically in love with my right position in God and radically pursue it. One more time. I'm emphatically in love with my right position in God and radically pursue it. I want to know more about my right position in God. I want to know who He is. I want to know more about what He did. And to do that, we need to go deeper and deeper and deeper. The last couple of weeks, God has just pierced me, just pierced me. Especially last week, I'd encourage you, if you don't have that CD, if you weren't here last week, make sure you listen online, or maybe Andy will have some. Um, but, but what we've been learning is, is that who, who are you? Are. The word are. Are. Powerful word. The Lord said in Scripture, I am who I am. Are. It means you are. You are holy. You are righteous. Who am I? It really comes down to that question. Who am I? You know, last week we looked at that identity. You know, we are in an identity crisis in America. We don't know who we are as a country. And the reason we don't know who we are as a country is because we don't know who we are as people. We have no idea who we are. You, you look like a guy, but you can call yourself a girl. What? That's called an identity crisis. So we've been looking at this, and and so we're looking at this. And what I want to go today is I want to go a little deeper. I want to look at the fact is when you know who you are, you're going to start being transparent. Today I want to talk about transparency. Transparency. i got to confess to you, one of the questions I hate when people ask me in a lot of ways And you'll very seldom see me ask this question. How are you? Because most people don't care. But they ask you the question anyhow. Now, if some of you ask me a question, I know you mean it. But what's most of our answer? I'm fine. We're all lying through our teeth. (laughs) That's right. That's right. (laughs) But I hate the question. Because none of us are telling the truth. I mean, imagine. You go to the checkout. And what do they ask you? How are you? Now, you've got a line of people before you. Well, I'm not doing very well. I lost my job today. And, man, it's hard to get out of bed because I got this ache so bad. I could hardly get here. But I was very thankful. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what they would say. But they ask, how are you? Can you imagine giving them a five-minute dissertation how you are? They wouldn't know what to do with it. But we ask that question all the time. How are you? How are you? How are you? I got the other day, I was at Lowe's and picking something up there. And as I was there, there was a lady who was talking to one of the clerks there back in the plumbing area. And I could see that he had taken her to the place that she needed to get something, gave it to her. And next thing I knew, she was giving her life story. (laughs) And I'm standing there waiting and waiting and waiting. So finally, I said, well, let me go back and check myself. Maybe I'll find it. 
So about five minutes later, I come back, and he's still, she's still talking to him. And I, finally, he, he saw me again, and he says, excuse me, ma'am, I need to wait on him. And she looks at him, and she goes, okay. And I then turned to him, I said, I want to thank you for being so kind to this woman. And he goes, you know something? I used to be a bartender. <laughs> and what's the major job of a bartender? It's not to get the drink. It's to listen. It's to listen. You know, transparency. Transpa it's allowing the light to pass through, right? Nothing blocking it. But people aren't transparent at all today. We have a former president who said, we're going to have the most transparent administration ever. That was a lie. <sighs> but it's just not him. It's all politicians. I don't trust one of them. I don't trust one of them. They're not transparent. I just saw what happened with the Gulf of, you know, what happened with that oil tanker. That oil tanker, two, it says two torpedoes hit it. No, it didn't, because the damage is above the water. The crew is saying that a missile hit it. Our government's saying the other things. Somebody's not being transparent. And the reason I don't believe is because I see the Gulf of Tonkin. If you've done any history work, the Gulf of Tonkin was a lie. We got the Vietnam War because of oil. You look at 9-11. Yes, it came down. But did you see the one tower? Nobody hit it. It went down. It was dead demolition. It came straight down. Nobody hit it. And they're telling us other things. Nobody's being transparent. You don't look in the news today. You don't see anybody talking about what's happening to the food. Do you realize a thousand, a million cows were lost in this flood? One million cows. That's the reason she, uh, Anita talked about it yesterday, because I talked to her about it. One million cows. Do you know what's going to happen to the food prices? It's already happening. That's right. Because do you realize right now, a less than 30% less than of our crops have been put in. Farmers are devastated. I've been praying much for farmers. I encourage you to do the same. They're losing everything. But nobody's talking about it. Nobody's being transparent about it. You think about it, where did it all start from? Adam and Eve. As soon as they sinned, what did they do? They went and go hide themselves. You can't find me, God. <laughs> look, at the, look at the culture today. Nobody's transparent. Look at husbands and wives. I mean, divorce is running rampant. Why does most divorce happen? It's because people aren't honest with one another. You're not telling the truth about each other. You're not being honest with one another. You hide. Oh, I'm fine. Then you go pop the rest of the night. <sighs> Nothing's happened. That's what's happened. Who are, a husband and wife are supposed to be most intimate. We're to be most transparent to one another, but we're not that. That's so why we live lonely lives living in the same house. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, look at what else goes. How, we're highest, we're, we're, suicide, suicide rate is over the top now. How many people are killing themselves? Because they haven't been able to be transparent to anybody. So they go deep with inside themselves. And before you know it, they hate themselves. The next thing, they, they kill themselves. One-sixth of Americans are on psychotropic drugs. They're taking these drugs to hide, to escape. We got the worst drug epidemic in the history of America. You know, more people are dying of opiate than of car accidents today. Everybody is lonely, they're hurting, they're lost, and everybody's trying to escape. So we go to the refrigerator, we go to the computers, do, 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 do. Then we play the little video games. I mean, we've got 60-year-old men going, do, 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 because they, they don't know what to do with themselves. Are you crazy? But they're lonely, they're lost, they're hurting, and they're not transparent. And I'm thinking to myself, the reason... Most of us don't pray. 
is because we don't want to be transparent. But yet the one we pray to is the most transparent of all who has ever walked this earth. His name's Jesus. We read Hebrews this morning, and I'm going to personalize it. I'm going to put our name here. Rusty, in these last days, God has appointed to you, has spoken to you in me, Jesus, his son. Rusty, God has appointed me heir of all things. Rusty, it was through me God made the world. Rusty, I am the radiance of God's glory. Rusty, I am the exact representation of God's nature. Rusty, I uphold all things by the word of his power. Rusty, when I made purification of sin, I sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. You put your name there. It changes everything and the dynamic of God. He's the heir. He says, I'm the possessor. He says, he says, through me, the world was made. I'm the radiance. I'm the one who shines forth. All the glory, all perfection, it's me. I'm the exact representation. He said, I'm the exact copy of God. I'm the substance of God. I'm all that is. That's what he's saying. He's saying, when you see me, you are seeing God. That's what he's saying. And the Father and the Son were absolute transparent towards each other. When you saw one, you saw the other. That's the reason the world couldn't handle Jesus. Because they couldn't imagine God becoming man. They couldn't understand and figure out that he'd be walking this earth being like them. They couldn't handle it. Now think about it. Transparency. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. <clears throat> I'm the light. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. He says, I'm the light of the world. Why does he say, I'm the light of the world? Because that's who God is. God is light. It says in John 1, 1 John 1, it says, God is light. He said, that's the message we announced to you. God is light. Jesus says, I am light. In Psalms, it says, the Lord is God. He has given us light. It says in Habakkuk, His radiance is like the sunshine. He's light. Who's Jesus? He's light. He's the radiance. <clears throat> he then continues in John 8, and he begins to say, I am He who testifies about Myself. And the Father who sent Me testifies about Me. That word testimony means I bear witness, I've experienced, I've heard, I've seen, I've become one with. And he says, my father, I've seen the father, I'm transparent, father's seen me, we've always been together. Transparency. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Who's the Lord? The shepherd. What does Jesus say? I am the good, what? Shepherd. Jesus says, let's say it again. I am the good shepherd. Transparency. What God the Father is, Jesus Christ is. He said, the Father knows me and I know the Father. That word know means intimate, like a husband and wife. Intimate in all ways. Later on in John 10, he says, no one will snatch them out of my hand. That's what he says. No one's going to snatch them out of my hand. And then he says, the Father, my Father who's given me to them is greater than all, and no one will snatch them out of my Father's hand. So he says, they're not going to get them out of my hand. They're not going to get out of my Father's hand because we are one. Have you ever really been one with somebody? We 
was just after he shared the heart. And he won. And you're so transparent. There's that connection. That's what Jesus and the Father are. Because they're transparent. There's nothing Jesus did to hide from the Father. There's nothing he hid from the Father. There's nothing the Father hid from Jesus. In John 11, after he went to Mary and Martha, and Lazarus had been dead for, for several days, Jesus goes to, to, goes to the tomb, and they said, roll away the, sto to the, ro roll away the stone. And people are thinking, you're nuts. He's been dead for four days. He's going to stink. And what does Jesus do? He cries this prayer. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Always. I love that word, always. Linda, do I always hear you? No. <laughs> Not even close, is it? <sighs> but that's reality, isn't it? Always hear. Always unity. Whatever I say, Father, I know you're going to hear. Because we're in perfect oneness. There's transparency between us. In John 17, when he's praying the great prayer, this is really the Lord's prayer here. This is when Jesus lays it all out in John 17. But at the end, he's praying for you and I. He's praying for those who are coming after the apostles. And he makes this prayer. He said in verse 21, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Get a load of that word. That we may be as close. Robin, you and I may be as close as the Father and the Son are. How does that happen? Being transparent. That's how you become one. You've got to be honest. You got to be real. Most of us don't even think about that. But not Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, Father, take this cup away from me. He's being real. But not my will, but thy will be done. He knew what was coming. He's being honest about it. He's hanging on the cross, and all the sin is not upon him. He's getting the wrath of the Father. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He cries out to the Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? He feels abandoned. He feels alone. He's being real, but it's on the cross. The greatest transparency of who God is took place. The reality that we are, he knew we are sinful and unclean. He knew we had no hope. He knew there's no other way we could possibly get to heaven. There's no way we could earn our way to heaven. There's nothing I could do. And the only way is him to show the full extent of his love. And that love came on the cross. Full transparency of love. And that meant suffering. That meant dying. That meant hurting. That's how much Jesus loves you. And that's how much God loves you. Transparency. Yet here we are in our culture today, we hide from everybody. Whether it's the video games, it's running, it's, it's being alone. I mean, we, we don't want to be real. But yet here, this is what God says of, about us. I personalize Psalm 139 again. Robin, I've searched you and I know you. Joanne, I know when you sit down. Mary, I know when you rise up. Woody, I understand your thoughts from afar. Matt, I scrutinize your path. Sheila, I know when you lie down. Linda, I'm intimately acquainted with you in all your ways. Frida, even before there's a word on your tongue, I know it all. 
Mike, I have enclosed you behind and before. And Chris, I've laid my hand upon you. You know, he talks very clearly here. He's making a prayer. He knows everything. There's not a thing, not a thing he doesn't know about me. No wonder in Hebrews 4, he says, be diligent to enter the rest. He says, I want you to enter the rest. How do you enter the rest? You enter the rest when you start being transparent because he then goes, takes the word of God. And, oh, I can't go into that right now. But verse 13, he says, you, Rusty, you and all creatures are, cannot hide from my sight. Rusty, all things and everything about you are open and laid bare to my eyes with whom you, can, whom you have to do. Bare to the eyes. There's nothing. It's being naked before God. That's what's happening, folks. It's laying your soul wide open. There's nothing he doesn't know. But we try to hide all the time. We can hide from people. We can hide from self. We can even try to hide from our emotions. We can try to hide all we want. And you know why we keep busy for most of us to hide. Most of us are on the computer to hide. We don't want to get honest and real about who we are. But the fact is we can't hide anything from God. See, God wants us to know that he knows. He wants us to know that he knows everything about us. When God says, Rusty, how are you? He wants me to tell him. And he wants us to acknowledge to him everything about going on in our life and to be real. Some of us have had the privilege of being a parent. And as a parent, we love it when our kids sit down and talk. When they get real with us. We had our granddaughter over at our house yesterday for a few hours. She didn't stop talking the minute she entered until when I took her home. She told us everything. And you know something? Grandma and I were in hog heaven. Because this little girl just shared her heart with us. And that's exactly what God wants from us. And what a truth when we begin to do that. Now, I'm going to read a couple of stories that went to the last couple of weeks, but that's okay. I'm, I'm going to kind of continue on with them. And the story that we looked at last week, I think a prime example of transparency is Gideon. Now, remember the story of Gideon. We remember that, that evil had, uh, Israelite didn't, Israel didn't do what they were called to do. They had gone into the promised land. They now had conquered, but yet... They, God gave them that command, don't mess with the foreign gods. Don't mess with the gods of the Baal. Don't do that. But guess what they did? Just They put other gods before them, just like we do. And so God was, wasn't happy. And so in chapter 6, we see very clearly that he begins, he, he brings the Midianites in. And as he brings the Midianites in, they're destroying all the produce of the land. They're taking all the sheep. They're taking all the donkeys. And Israel, as low as you can go, they're hiding in caves. They're looking for places to live. When they grab, they're able to get some food. They have to go hide it a little bit. And that's exactly what Gideon was doing when in chapter 6, verse 11, when the angel of the Lord came to him. He was behind this oak tree. And he was beating the wheat and the wine press in order for the Midianites not to be able to get it. And so these people are desperate. They're losing everything. Everything they thought it was going to be wasn't. And now they're extremely str struggling and they're frustrated. The enemy had consumed the land. And so the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And says, the Lord's with you, a valiant warrior. Now what we talked about last week is what the Lord was doing is giving Gideon an identity. How many of you know you need an identity? And the identity that he gave him, he said, the Lord is with you. You're a valiant warrior. 
Now, I love that phrase. He's a valiant warrior because the Lord is with him. Let me make it very clear. You're a valiant warrior because the Lord is with you. That's your identity. The Lord is with you. Now, what Gideon does, he begins to be transparent. And this isn't a bad thing to be transparent to God in this way. He, Gideon turns to him and says, Oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this bad stuff happened? Where are all the miracles that happened but who the fathers told about? Did not the Lord bring us up to Egypt? Out of Egypt? It looks like he's abandoned us. In other words, he's saying, I'm frustrated. And if you ever get frustrated? Do you ever tell God? Most of us don't, but I'm glad some of you do. He's being transparent towards God. He's telling God what's on his heart. But now what we need to hear is what God says back to him. Go in this your strength. Have I not sent you? How does he go? He goes in his identity. He goes in the identity of who he is. His identity is God's with you. That's your identity if you're born again. God is with you. You don't go on your own strength. You go, God is with you. It's identity. But then he comes up with more things. He's being transparent again. He says, oh, Lord, how shall I deliver Israel? Behold, my family is the least of Manassas, and I'm the youngest in my father's house. In other words, you could say he's making more excuses, but really he's being transparent as well. He says, God, this is impossible. I'm the least of the tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. There's 12 tribes. Manassas is the bottom rung. I am the least. And then he said, of all the 32,000 families in Manassas, I, my family is at the bottom rung. I'm the nobody of nobodies. If there was, if you had to compare, I live in the trash dung. That's what he said. And then, if my family, who's in the trash dung, I'm at the bottom of that. He's saying, I'm nothing, Lord. And he's saying it to God. Do you ever sometimes you feel like you're nothing? We do, don't we? That's what Gideon's saying. He's being transparent. He's being honest before God. And what I want you to remember is you need to, and I need to be honest before God. But God begins to say again, I will be with you. That's my identity. That's your identity. God is with me. And then we see the wonderful things that God did through him. But the point was, he went to God, he talked to God, he heard God, and God transformed him. He was honest. The other night, we were at a meeting. And at the meeting, it was a good meeting, and all somebody, somebody began, became transparent. And the minute that he became transparent, the whole atmosphere of the meeting changed because they were being real. They were being honest. They were being, and the Holy Spirit just anointed our time because one person was willing to be honest. Transparency. It's like Jehoshaphat said, Lord, I'm powerless. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to keep my eyes on you. We have to admit our powerlessness. We have to admit where we're at. We have to admit our struggles. But we need to keep our eyes on him. Transparency when we encounter God. Isaiah to me, and that we mentioned a couple weeks ago, but this Isaiah 6 text, I will tell you, you talk about transparency. Isaiah had this vision of God. When he had this vision of God, he saw the seraphs crying and flying around, and there's six winged, two are covering the face, two the feet, two are, are flying, and they're singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And when that happened, it's like the revelation came. They, you saw the foundation shaking. 
God was there. And the revelation that Isaiah had at that moment was, woe is me. That was the transparent. That was the revelation. He understood at that point in time when he had this encounter with God, he, he said, woe is me, God. I recognize the greatness and the magnitude of your name. And I realize I'm nothing. I'm nothing. The people are nothing. You are everything. See, that's transparency. When you get to that place in your life and you understand the greatness of God and what you've been. But what does God do? He takes the coals and he touches the lips. In essence, he said, I've redeemed you. The cross, we're for The cross touches you and you're alive and you're made alive through the cross. And now Isaiah understands who he is. But you see, he's transparent before God. And God says, who shall I send? He's going, send me, send me, send me. I'm going to suggest part of the reason we're not transparent before God is because we haven't had encounters with God. We're not transparent before God because we haven't had encounters with God. The more encounters you have with God, the more transparent you'll be with God. The more that you love somebody, the more you have intimacy, the more you're going to be in one with them, and the more you're going to be honest with them, right? And the reason we're not transparent is because we just haven't encountered God. Because we understand this God who we encounter, who saved us, who went to that cross for us, and what he did for us, we would be so transparent. It'd be flowing out of our mouth. Romans 13. Again, I'm personalizing it. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm taking scripture. I've done about six epistles. I know you'll be getting them all too. They'll be on our website. You can get them. Rusty, do this, knowing the time that is already at hour for you to awaken from your sleep. Rusty, know that now salvation is nearer to us than when we believe. Rusty, hear this. The night is almost gone and the day is near. In other words, he said, Rusty, wake up. I'm ready to come back. How many of you believe God's Jesus may be coming back soon? Well, I sure do. He said, wake up. Wake up. Quit sleeping, Rusty. Therefore, this is what I want you to do, Rusty. And when I say Rusty, put your own name in. Hear this. The night's almost gone, the day is near. Therefore, Rusty, lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Rusty, behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy. Rusty, put on me the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Okay, here we go. Folks, what are you saying here? I need to be able to go before God. You know, part of the reason we say the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in hallowed be thy name. You know why he starts with holiness? He starts with holiness in that prayer because he wants us to see, just like Isaiah did, the greatness of God, the magnificence of God. He wants us to take in how great he is. So we begin by that process. We begin to worship and praise God. That's the key. Worship and begin the process. And then you just lay yourself before God. Tell God, Lord, I'm having a problem with, with greed. God, I'm struggling with insecure. God, I'm not in your word like I need to be in your word, God. My prayer life stinks, God. Tell him that. God, I'm a procrastinator. God, I don't want to be that way. God, I want to be disciplined because you said that's part of the Spirit. And you begin to take the fruit of the Spirit. You take the things of sin you see in Scripture in your own life, and you just tell God. Don't be ashamed. He already knows it. So you're not hiding from him. It's like the little kid taking the cookie out of the cookie jar. Mom already knows you did it. So what begins to happen if we start being real with God this way? God, I'm worried. 
Okay. Tell them. God, I'm struggling financially. Yeah. God, I, I, I'm trying to lose weight, God, but I, I can't. I'm really struggling with this, God. Yeah. God, I'm really struggling with drugs right now. God, help me with that. Okay. You just put the list in, and you do, and you tell God, and then you listen to what he's got to say. Take the word of God. Read a scripture like this. I'll be sending more stuff out. Take and personalize what I've been giving you and make it real. Linda and I are most intimate when we're real with one another. We're distant when we're not. It's the same thing with God. And it's a matter of us saying, I want to, get to, I want to be, be transparent before God. I want to be his vessel. Because I'm going to tell you what, folks, our prayers are going for naught if we don't get transparent with God. Because otherwise, all our prayers are gimme, 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 gimme. Instead of being so real and so God. And you express those feelings and those thoughts and whatever's going around you to him. And you know what? He's smiling. He's smiling. What do we do with this? What do we do with this message? Take it. How many of you, will you be honest? Have you all been very transparent with God? I know you have. But most of us aren't, are we? And to be closer to God means transparency. Transparency. Matt, I'm so glad you and Holly are here today. But here's what I know. You were pretty ticked off two months ago. You had a house situation that you didn't think there's any way you're going to get out of this. And you told God. You spent hours in prayer, the two of you, going to God. Can God? I'm ticked. <laughs> okay, there were all the situations. Was God offended? No. Did God open a door? They moved to Hubbard instead of being out in the country in Boondock land. Okay. <laughs> it's now 15 minutes here instead of an hour. But the point is, I know Matt's heart. He prays. Amen. And he told God these things. So if you're worried, what do we need to do? God. Tell God. Okay. And you know something? He's going to hear us. And he's going to listen. And maybe he won't change the situation, but he's going to change me. And as he changes me, I'm able then to walk in that valiant warrior that God is with me. All right. Does this make sense? Any thoughts before I close? Prayer. All right. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. First, we want to thank you, Lord, for being transparent. We want to thank you, God, for how kind and good you are. We thank you that you showed us what transparency looks like with you in Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you as you walk this earth. You and the Father... We're one. You did whatever the Father told you to do. You 
You did whatever he told you to do. Whatever he told you to speak, you spoke. We thank you that your identity came from what the Father said. I'm the light of the world. I'm the good shepherd. I am he. All the claims the Father made, you made. Because of the transparency and oneness that was between the Father and the Son. My prayer is, God, is that every morning we'll get up and be transparent before you. Lord, I'm tired today, Lord. I'm going to need your strength to get through. At the end of the day, we close the day being honest with you, being transparent. When we sin, we say, Lord, forgive me for that thought, for that attitude. Forgive me what I didn't do today. I pray throughout the day in listening to you. Lord, I've got this appointment here at this house. God, bless this time. God, show me what's wrong. God, show me what's happening. Holy Spirit, forgive us. Father, forgive us. Jesus, forgive us that we have lacked such transparency before you. Forgive us, God. The most of us don't live in peace. Why don't we live in peace? Because we're hiding something. God, I pray that we make a commitment today no longer hide anything. I pray we recognize the cross knowing those outstretched arms have forgiven us. And even on our worst of days let us confess it to you and hear you say I forgive you. said in the word that you are with us. If we're born again, you live in us. My prayer is, God, as we be real with you. My prayer, God, is that we just tell you everything that's going on in our lives. Forgive us that we're like Adam and Eve, try to hide from you. And our, our, our lives go south, God. We, we're not transparent, yet all the world creeps in and we become like the world. We don't want that, God. In these last days, we want people saved. We want to be so intimate and so close to you, God. We want to be that vessel of grace. But, God, we have to get rid of the stuff. And to be honest, I know most people live with a knot in their stomach. And that knot's in that stomach because we haven't been real with you. Thank you for this word today. That reminds us you want all transparency. You want to be, you want us to be that vessel, Lord, that your spirit flows through. There's nothing that stops your spirit from just being your hands, your feet, your mouth through our being. 
you want us just to sh- lay before you and just talk and commune. Oh, God, we thank you. If you would like, please repeat after me. Lord, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I make a commitment today through the power of your spirit to be transparent before you, to be honest, and to be real. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done here today. I thank you for the lives that have been changed, starting with mine. I pray, God, that you will, and I look forward to see how you draw so close to you that this little body becomes a powerhouse in prayer yearning for more and more of you. Thank you, Lord. And we honor you. In Jesus' precious name. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast. Thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath Pardon for sin and 
and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness great Thank you, Lord, you are faithful. We thank you for your precious hand. We love you and thank you for your presence here at this service today. Lord, I pray today we may be your hands, your feet, your mouth of grace and love wherever we go. We pray all this in Jesus' name.